you're a new player trying to dive in a pool filled with established automobile manufacturers, it's crucial that you make a pretty big splash. And I think that's exactly what Chang'an has accomplished with their compact crossover. Introducing the CS75 Plus. When it comes to exterior design, there are certain boundaries that are hard not to cross. For example, when you try to veer away from a cookie-cutter approach to avoid coming up with something that looks generic, you run the risk of coming up with something that's over-the-top or polarizing at best. And with the CS75 Plus, the styling may be aggressive, but I don't think they've gone over-the-top. At the front, you get this huge grille flanked by these sleek LED headlights, and you can adjust the level of this conveniently from the inside. You also get DRLs and halogen fog lamps. Along the side, you get black body cladding, which is typical for a crossover. But I don't think there's anything typical about the side profile. There are some chrome accents, and while I'm not a huge fan of chrome, I really don't think it's overused here. The CS75 Plus rolls on 18-inch wheels with gunmetal inserts, and it has four-wheel disc brakes ventilated up front, and solid discs at the back. At the back, you get these intricate LED tail lamps and these nicely integrated dual exhausts. Yes, they're real. Opening the tailgate is done manually, and if you think you have to fumble for the release button, you don't, because you can think of this as an arrow that points you right to it. Opening the tailgate reveals a lot of space. You get 620 liters with the seats up, and 1,450 liters with the seats folded. Now let's see if this thing is just as flashy on the inside. Wow, this is definitely an interesting cabin to say the least. At first glance, you can already tell that this is an ultra modern interior. It also looks and feels extremely upscale. The materials on the dash and door cards are extremely soft touch. All touch points are padded and these seats are extremely comfortable. The leather is soft and the bolstering and thigh support are exceptional. And with this tilt and telescopic steering column, it's easy to find your ideal driving position. Build quality is also very good. The switch gear, air vents, and all moving parts feel extremely solid. Nothing feels cheap or flimsy. In terms of functionality, you get charge ports, cup holders, and this cooled storage space underneath the armrest. Your infotainment comes in the form of this 12-inch touchscreen, which is also well integrated. It doesn't have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but it does have a mirroring function. You also get a 360 camera. However, the picture quality is just slightly better than what you'd get in a Nokia 7650. And it doesn't have a 3D view. But hey, it gets the job done. And besides, there are other neat features and so much configurability. For instance, you get various drive modes where you can switch between Eco and Sport. But aside from that, you also have an individual setting where you can adjust the transmission and steering individually. So you can have the transmission on the sportiest setting, but the steering on the lightest or most comfortable setting. Now that's not common for cars at this price point. The instrument cluster is also digital and varies depending on the drive mode you've selected. And it also displays an image of the car, which tells you if your brake lights or headlights are on. Now operating the climate control system can be done via the infotainment screen or through this touchpad. So there aren't any physical buttons, but it does provide haptic feedback. However, operating this without looking at it will take some getting used to. 
Now, it only has a single zone, but at least you get rear air vents. And other niceties at the back include USB charge ports, an armrest, and map lights. There's plenty of space at the back, and the seats are also quite comfortable. And though the belt line is quite high, it doesn't feel claustrophobic, thanks to the huge panoramic sunroof. Under the hood, you get a turbocharged 1.5 liter gasoline engine, which pumps out 176 horsepower and 265 newton meters of torque. Now those are pretty decent numbers, but let's see what that translates to behind the wheel. So we're behind the wheel of the Chang'an CS75 Plus. And I must tell you that my expectations of this are pretty high, considering what's written on this car spec sheet. You have good power figures, multi-link suspension, not to mention the various drive modes and configurability. So let's see what that translates to when you put the pedal down. Okay, so power delivery isn't abrupt, but it does get there. What I like is how refined it's all delivered. So your peak torque comes in at 1,450 RPM. So the power delivery is immediate, but it's not brutal. It's a very smooth and linear power delivery. And you can feel the power kind of build up as you get towards the higher end of the revs. So I currently have this on sport mode with the steering on its firmest setting. And I must say that it's nicely weighted. Now the steering ratio isn't the quickest out there, but it's still quick to respond. What I like is the fact that it gives you a good amount of feedback so you can tell exactly where the wheels are pointing. Now I also like the way the suspension of this is tuned because it soaks up road imperfections pretty well. And when you corner at speed, it still feels planted and you can feel the grip. There is a slight bit of body roll, but that's fine, especially considering how refined the ride is. And since this is a crossover, a little bit of body roll isn't a bad compromise for a superb riding experience. The cabin also does a really good job in insulating you from the noise outside. Now you do hear the engine noise a bit, especially when you rev it out, which is pretty much expected. There is a bit of tire noise, but it's nothing annoying. Overall, it provides a very pleasant riding experience. And this luxurious interior really helps to take it up another level. Now the brakes are also well modulated and it isn't an on-off switch, which I appreciate. It gives you better feel and better control of the braking distance. This also gives you really good visibility because aside from giving you a nice commanding view of the road, you can also see the hood, which is something I think a lot of people will appreciate. But the real bonus is the fact that it has a 360 camera. And each time you use your turn signals, it gives you a view of your blind spot, which makes it all the more easy to drive, and it really puts your mind at ease. Now, I, I know I said earlier that the resolution wasn't the best, but as far as functionality is concerned, it really helps. Now, this comes with a traditional six-speed automatic transmission, and a lot of people will say that's old school, but for me, it's a non-issue because you don't have to deal with the droning you get with a CVT or the jerkiness of a DCT. And the transmission is very quick to shift. You actually don't feel it shifting. And when you put your foot down, it downshifts immediately, which is very good. Now I'm gonna pop it into manual mode, see what that's like.
it, it shifts abruptly on manual mode. So there's no lag when you shift up or when you shift down. It's tuned very nicely. I'm actually quite glad they went with a conventional six-speed automatic transmission. So who exactly would a car like this cater to? Well, if you're someone who needs a daily driver and you need something that's comfortable and easy to drive, then this definitely should be on your short list. But the bonus here is that you don't have to break the bank to get something with a, a well-equipped and luxurious interior because it just makes the driving and riding experience all the more special. And that's exactly what you need when you live in a city like Metro Manila where traffic is horrendous. This really cocoons you and isolates you from all the chaos out there. The Chang'an CS75 Plus can be yours for 1,229,000 pesos. And I know there's an increasing number of well-equipped vehicles at that price point. But considering how well this thing drives, it really should be on your shortlist. And if you're not ready to make a purchase just yet, it really should be on your wish list.